who's the best comic book publisher, guys? Definitely Marvel. You got Iron Man. He he he's a playboy, so he likes boobies. You got the X Men, which have a bunch of X girls and got boobies. You got Rogue's boobies, but you don't want to touch Rogue's boobies because you touch Rogue's boobies, you gotta be hurting. Might be worth it. Then you got Deadpool and Dead. Well, Deadpool likes boobies, so yeah, all their stuff is pretty awesome. Of course you would give an immature answer like that. Now, Marvel is for children. DC is way better. It's for more mature readers. Like, you know, and it's darker. You, you know, you can have your little Spider-Man, but Superman, Batman, the Teen Titans are way cooler. Oh my god, you cannot be freaking serious. Batman? Batman is some rich weirdo that lives in a cave and keeps little boys in tight little pants. I mean, come on. His arch enemy is a freaking clown. Batman's a joke. What? You, you don't even know what you're talking about. I mean, Batman is one of the coolest superheroes ever. He I mean, he, he's the knight. He's justice. He's vengeance. He's everything. Oh, yeah? Well, who's cooler, Batman or Wolverine, man? I mean, come on, it's Wolverine. He's got an exoskeleton or the endoskeleton, exo... What is it, endo or exo? I don't know. He's got a skeleton that's made out of freaking metal and he's got the claws and the heels and he's like, you know, older than dirt. Yo, man, you can't kill Wolverine. Wolverine just comes over and he's going to stick it in, stick it in. Batman going and being a million pieces. He's going to be like, you know... You gonna be chip chopped ham. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure with enough prep time, I mean, Batman could, like, you know. I, I mean, I don't know if he's ever really encountered an animatium, but. Well. I. Uh, come on, come on now. Batman is pretty dope. Wolverine's freaking awesome. But you know what's even cooler, guys? Low jobs. Uh, well, I'm just gonna have to take his word on that, and, well, Firebush, I just, I guess we're gonna have to agree and disagree, I, I guess. I mean, you know you're wrong. Well, yeehaw! Why don't we just agree to disagree? That settles every fucking argument, doesn't it? Yeah, we just put all the arguing aside, man. And just think how cool it is. That we get to exist in this moment right now and hang out and read and discuss comics. We're pretty fucking lucky, guys. <laughs> He's smoking those wacky tobacco cigarettes again, isn't he? I don't know, man, but if he is, he needs a share. Well, hello there. My name is Firebush, and welcome to the new series, How To with Firebush. I decided to do this because I've noticed in the world today, people rather spit on you than help you. So, you gotta start learning how to do things for yourself, even the hard things that you usually go to others to have them do. So you know what? I'm gonna teach you a bunch of how-to videos, starting with today's, how to perform open heart surgery on your sale. Cause let's face it, doctors are expensive. All right, first off, I gotta get a little uh, disclaimer is what they call them. Okay, open heart surgery is a major surgical procedure that requires a high degree of skill and experience. It is not something that should ever be attended by someone who isn't formally trained in the procedure. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you must perform open heart surgery on yourself, here are some tips by your friend O' Firebush that may help you. Step number one, gather the necessary supplies. Before you can begin open heart surgery, you need to make sure that you have all the necessary shit. This includes a heart lung machine, you can get those at any Walmart, scalpels, 
and a ventilator. And other necessary items that I really don't feel like listing because it will take too long. You can figure that out for yourself. Make sure you have access to all these items though before you start your open heart surgery. Step two, make sure you're medically fit. Before you attempt open heart surgery in yourself, you need to make sure that you are medically fit to do so. This includes being in good physical health and having a clean bill of health from your doctor. Wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. Then why would you need the open heart surgery? Never mind step number two. You're fucked, so you gotta do it. Step number three, research, research, research. You need to research that procedure. Before you attempt to open heart surgery on yourself, you need to research thoroughly. This includes making yourself familiar with all the different steps involved with the procedure as any potential risk or complications that might arise from performing open heart surgery on your own self. Step four, get help. While it's possible to perform open heart surgery on yourself, it is strongly recommended that you seek help from a medical professional. This could include a surgeon or a cardiologist. But like I explained, we're broke as fuck and, you know, doctors are expensive. So, screw it. Screw 4 too. Screw step 4 too. We ain't doing step 4. But step number 5 is important. You need to prepare the area. Before you begin the procedure, make sure that the area is clean and sterile. You know, just like a freaking gas station bathroom. This includes wearing protective gear, such as condoms. Oh, no, such as gloves and face masks. Sorry, I read that wrong. As well as using sterilizing solutions to clean the area. So basically, throw a bunch of hand sanitizer on the table and go party. Yeah! Step number six, begin the procedure. Once you've gathered the necessary supplies, have researched the procedure, and made sure your area is clean and sterile, you can begin. Start by making an incision in your chest and continue with the procedure according to your research. Step number seven, monitor the area. Throughout the procedure, you should carefully monitor the area for any sites of infections or other complications. If any signs of infections or other complications arise, you should seek help from a medical professional immediately. But like I said, they're expensive. So if you get an infection or something, just throw some peroxide on it, you'll be fine. Step 8. Close the incision. When you are finished with the procedure, Make sure that you close the incision properly. This includes using uh, sutures and other necessary items to ensure that the area is properly closed and sealed. You know, you want to get it really sealed like one of those Ziploc baggies. You remember back in the day when they would actually have blue and yellow and then you put them together and they were green? Whatever happened to those? I enjoyed those, man. I was like, sweet, the thing's green. That means I know that my uh, turkey pot pie is going to be fine in there. What was I talking about again? Oh, yeah, open heart surgery. Uh, okay. Step number nine. Seek medical attention. Even though you performed the open heart surgery on yourself, it's still important to seek medical attention after the procedure. This is to make sure the procedure was a success and there are no complications. Yeah, this one's going to cost you a little bit of money, but it's a lot cheaper than having them go and do in the uh, open heart themselves and, you know, charging you a gajillion. You might get some weird looks when a doctor is looking at your fucked up job you did, but you know what? You didn't have to pay for it. And that's it. So, well, friendo, this has been How to Perform Open Heart Surgery on Yourself with Firebush. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something from it. And tune in next time where Firebush will be telling you how to artificially impregnate a horse. Alright, well, have a great time and good luck in your surgery. I don't believe I have to fucking say this, but 
Firebush is not a medical professional and anything he says should not be taken seriously. If you need open heart surgery, go to a damn hospital. Jesus Christ. Anyways, yeah, peace. Firebush, I, all right, I think I left my cell phone in my office. No, I'm gonna go get it. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. All right, this stuff is not for you. You do not have the mental capacity to even understand anything here. So, just don't. All right, I'll be right back. A few seconds later. This is interesting. Hmm. Wonder what this button does. Nope, nope, Firebush. You said don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. I ain't gonna touch it. I ain't got a button. It is a shiny button. And, you know, they wouldn't make that button look so shiny if they didn't want me to touch it. Yep, I'm gonna touch the button. Well, hello there. I'm Firebush from an alternate universe. You know what's special about me? I'm left-handed. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you do everything left-handed? Yep. I write left-handed. And yes, Firebush, I spank my monkey left-handed too. Well, yeehaw, that's all I really wanted to know. <laughs> boobies. I think about boobies when I'm doing it. Lots of boobies. Well, yeah, but I like big butts. I cannot lie. Hey! Hey! And, uh, who are you? Greetings. In my world, I have a third eye where I can see fart particles. Impressive, right? You know what, I'm just starting to realize this is all just about Hawkboy's obsession with Rick and Morty. Yep. God damn it, Hawkboy. Anyways, back to the show. Uh, fart particles, you say? Yeah, um, no, I'm not really that impressed. So, you're the evil one. That's right, I am the evil fire bush. They call me Evil Bush. And I have a special trait too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this, this guy's got some mental problems. Hello, everyone. Ah, I'm Sexy Bush. I'm the female version. <laughs> Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm the evil bush, <laughs> and I have a special trait. Oh, really? Now, what makes you so special? Yeah, let's just say I have a massive, huge. <gasps> you thought I was gonna say ego, didn't you? No, no joke here. I have a huge. Well, oh my! I say, evil bush. You're giving me the vapors. What do you say we are? Find a dimension a little less crowded. What just happened? Well, yeehaw. I guess they just gave a new meeting to go fuck yourself. <laughs> friends and 
enjoyed spending time together, from going out to eat to just lounging around and watching movies. What in the daisy do? Do you guys hear that? Oh, well, man, my Ted and nice is acting up again. Damn, I love our Ted and Billy Joe concert. But he's the piano man. He didn't start the fire. Yeah, yeah, we, we know the name of the Billy Joel song. You don't got to go over them all. And then there's moving out. And then there's pressure. And then there's big shot. Oh my God, here we go again. Anytime anybody mentions Billy Joel, he's got to talk about every Billy Joel song he likes. I'm just not even going to listen to him right now. This is a bunch of bullshit. Guys, just knock it off. I mean, come on. And it's not Ted and Nine, Rod. We all hear it. One day, while they were out shopping, they came across an old shop with a mysterious feel. Intrigued, they decided to venture inside. As they explored, they came across a peculiar item. A monkey's paw. I am intrigued by this store, and I want to venture inside. Guys, look! It's a monkey paw! Yeah, what a, what a peculiar item that is. The shopkeeper explained that the paw was magical and would grant three wishes. Despite the warning that he gave them, the three roommates were eager to give it a try. Firebush was the first to make a wish. He wished for a million dollars. You know what? Despite the warnings that this shopkeeper has given us, I, I, I really want to try this. I think it would be very hot. I mean, I could go for a billion dollars. A billion? A little greedy there, Firebush. I mean, come on, what would you do with a billion dollars? Fine. I wish for a million dollars. Is that better? You sh dude, you should actually, you know, wish for a million wishes. Oh my god. It's like you don't even watch movies. In every movie that has wishes or genies or anything like that, there are rules. And they always make sure the number one rule is that mix in the wishing for other wishes. God! It's like I'm talking to a fucking toddler. I'm sorry, what? I wasn't listening. Much to their surprise, the next day, Firebush received a check in the mail for one million dollars. Excited, the three friends celebrated and started to plan what they would do with all that money. Holy moly, guys! I got a check for a million dollars! I'm rich! I'm like Dale Earnhardt Jr. rich! Holy shit! Hey, uh, give me that monkey paw. It's my turn. I'm gonna make a wish. I'm gonna wish for immortality. Jamie was next to make a wish. He wished for eternal youth so that he would never grow old or sick again. His wish was granted. Of course, now that I did it, I ain't gonna know that it's granted for a really long time. I can hit you in the head with an axe. Uh, yeah, okay. I don't, think, I don't see a problem with that. Okay, but it's gotta be like, you know, a big battle axe with skulls and barbed wire wrapped around and it shoots fire around him and it's really big and really elaborate, okay? <laughs> uh, Firebush, why, why do you need an axe like that? I mean, any axe would work. I know, but I think it'd be really funny to make the animators animate a big axe like that and piss them off really bad. Ron, the last of the three, was the most hesitant to make a wish. He was afraid of the consequences, but his friends convinced him to go ahead and make a wish. He wished for the ability to fly. Oh man, I don't know guys. I always thought, you know, you should work for shit by, you know, taking pictures of superheroes and publishing them and that's a total original idea that we did here. But anyways, um, you know what, screw it. I've always wanted to fly, so... You know what? I'm gonna wish to fly. Why didn't you just wish to be Superman? Then you could fly, be invulnerable, shoot lasers out of your eyes, you know, and all the cool stuff that Superman does. 
kind of wasted that wish. Yep. Thanks, Firebush. <sighs> Could have told me that. Ten seconds ago. The same day, Ron went out to try to fly, but soon learned that it was impossible. He had made a wish that was too ambitious, and it could not be granted. All right, guys, here we go. I'm gonna fly. I'm gonna soar like an eagle. Geronimo! <coughs> My leg! Oh, that sucked. Uh, you want us to call an ambulance? Ron? Jamie, I think we should call an ambulance. The three friends were so sad to realize the consequences of their wishes. Firebush and Jamie had been granted their wishes, but Ron had not. The monkey's paw had taught them a valuable lesson. To be careful what you wish for, and to not be too greedy. Oh man, that really sucked. What the hell happened, man? Why didn't my wish come true? Oh, yeah, by the way, Ron, uh, while you were unconscious, uh, you got a letter in the mail. You want some free plane tickets. You can fly anywhere you want. Really? What the hell? That is a stupid ending. Who the hell wrote this? Yeah, and who keeps talking? Guys, we're in the Matrix. You know that, right? I've been saying it for years. <laughs>